For years, I have been seeing this 3D Tyrannosaurus Rex model everywhere, from books to websites to even low-quality B-movies. I guess you could say that was a T-Rex explosive scene, I, I don't know, please don't click off the video. I'm sure that most, if not all of you guys, recognize this specific T-Rex model, and even if you don't, surely you'll recognize this Spinosaurus. Maybe this Brachiosaurus, or this Deinonychus, or this Triceratops? These few dinosaurs that I've listed are really just the surface of the iceberg when it comes to this art, as there are actually many dinosaurs with this style. Personally, they've always found fascinated me when I was younger, although I will admit simultaneously, given their association for what I can only describe as cheap and easy products like children's books and bad dinosaur movies, I had also seen them as cheaply made and not very good dinosaur models. But I mean back then I was a little dork who didn't understand true art. I was too busy being interested in things like Doug Henderson's and Luis Ray's paleo art. Man, what a loser. These 3D dinosaur models are where the real art is. All jokes aside, I grew to have a lot more appreciation with this art as I got older and found out about the little story behind their creation. These 3D rendered models were created by a man named Raul Lunia, but he would be best known as Dino Raul on the internet. In 2001, Dino Raul would join a site called Renderosity, a platform dedicated to those with a passion for digital arts and serves as a way for their community to chat and share and even sell digital art products and 3D models to both each other and to other people outside of the community. Dino Raul's page shows that he had a clear love of prehistoric life, making over 350 3D models and images of various different species, both well-known and obscure, and both for his gallery and his store. And while it's stated on the Renderosity site itself that Dino Raul started all the way back in 2001, looking at his gallery he would start posting his own art on April 25th, 2005. And pretty early on, you can tell that it wasn't just dinosaurs that Dino Raoul was fascinated by. Along with dinosaurs, his other 3D renders ranged from horror and gothic to mythical and fantasy pieces as well, with many depicting all sorts of fictional animals, some that he seemed to create himself, and others on already existing beasts like dragons and serpents. Given from what's shown today, his first real piece of paleo art would come in the form of a small flock of Ramphorhynchuses flying above a Jurassic jungle landscape, which he would post on May 5th, 2005. The description of this piece simply says Jurassic Pterosaur about 2 meter wingspan. On the same day, he would also post this more comedic piece showcasing a Tyrannosaurus reading the newspaper saying, Oh dear dear, Triceratops died out yesterday, while standing over some skeletal remains, one of which being some kind of Ceratopsid dinosaur. Hey, real quick, just wanted to correct myself. This T-Rex one was not posted on the same day as the Ramphorhynchus one. Like I said just now, the Ramphorhynchus one was uploaded on May 5th of 2005. The one with the T-Rex reading the newspaper was uploaded on May 20th of 2005. It would be his third dinosaur image which he posted on July 6th, 2005, when it seemed Dino Raoul would find his footing with these art pieces relating to prehistoric animals. This one being an image of a pair of stegosaurs and a description that gives out a lot of general information about the dinosaur, including its weight, length, diet, purpose for its plates, and so on. These little fun facts about the dinosaurs in the description would become a common thing as he continued to post his art although not all of his posts had them. Some of them had simple titles and general descriptions of the scene that was on the image. But on November 2nd, 2005, Dino Raoul would make small-scale history in the paleo community as he would post what could very well be one of, if not the first ever image of that T-Rex model that we would come to know and love. You know, the one that we see everywhere. <laughs> I know a lot of people don't seem to be too set on those designs, but honestly, I, I love them, at least. <laughs> These digital art dinosaur pieces wouldn't be the main focus of his page quite yet, though. He continued posting more digital art on natural landscapes, buildings, fantastical creatures, whatever the hell this thing is, and so on, while the dinosaurs and prehistoric animals were more of a every now and again kind of thing. 
but as time went on, he started posting more and more about dinosaurs consistently, especially throughout 2008. Another notable point in his digital art days would be his creation of the Spinosaurus model, which he would post on April 16th, 2008. What was also cool about Dino Raul is that he was pretty good about making models on lesser known dinosaurs and prehistoric creatures as well. Because alongside the popular dinosaurs like Tyrannosaurus, Spinosaurus, Apatosaurus, Stegosaurus, and Parasaurolophus, he would also give spotlight to dinosaurs and prehistoric animals like Achelosaurus, Keratocephalus, Dicreosaurus, Deltadromius, Crichtonsaurus, and so on. You can make fun of me in the comments down below if I mispronounced any of those because that's just, <laughs> that's kind of my thing now. <laughs> From this point on, dinosaurs would become the new staple of his Renderosity page. It would be filled with a huge variety of prehistoric wildlife, environments, and time periods. But one of his more interesting outlier pieces around this point included his take on sapient dinosaurs, calling them dinosapiens, and describing them as a theoretical reptilian humanoid that would be the possible result of dinosaurs had they not died out 66 million years ago. Again, this kind of served as an outlier to the rest of his art, but regardless, it's an interesting piece that still had dinosaur elements to it, obviously. He would continue to post pretty consistently all the way until 2012, where it looked like he would take a hiatus for the next couple of years or so, not posting again until the beginning of 2015 with a chronosaur emerging from the ocean, along with one more image of a Tarbosaurus in June of the same year. But then he wouldn't upload again until September of 2017, where he would continue to post consistently again for the next couple of months before it all came to a sudden end on October 28th, 2017, with an image of an Alioramus. Not much about Dino Raul is documented. I haven't had any luck finding him anywhere else on the internet. It doesn't look like he had any other social media presence outside of Renderosity. And as far as I'm concerned, all of the descriptions of his digital art posts never went into any detail about his personal life. But it would be easy to assume the reason he stopped posting so often was most likely due to the normal obstacles of life but people who followed him would end up getting a more definitive and unfortunate answer from the Renderosity people themselves regarding the whereabouts of Dino Raul. On September 13th, 2020, a post on Renderosity would be made titled Remembering Raul Lunia, aka Dino Raul, where it stated that they received tragic news from Raul's family themselves, confirming that he had passed away earlier that year. Given he was a pretty prominent member of the site for literally 19 years, contributing a lot by posting his abundance of digital dinosaur arts, it would make sense that Renderosity would want to honor him by making this post that goes a bit more in depth with his personal life and why he made the art that he made. A family member of Raul, more specifically his brother, at least according to Poser, another site that Raul used a lot, would come out to talk a little bit about Raul's story. How they lived in a small town in Estonia when they were kids, and how at this point in his life, his love and interest for animals and dinosaurs, like most children, were at an all-time high. Dinosaurs were, of course, his favorite, and as early as age four, he would be drawing them. But eventually, it went from drawing to making physical models of them out of wire, newspaper, and latex leather around 1985. He would do a lot of research and make many of these kinds of models, even apparently making a much larger, almost human-sized version of one. Eventually, he would transition from making physical models to making digital ones. According to Poser, when his dinosaur collection could no longer fit in his home, he donated all of them to the Estonian Museum of Natural History. Several exhibitions are still held. The dinosaur collection has around 120 species, including one human-sized model. After donating his collection, he transitioned to 3D models of dinosaurs, building on his years of experience as an animator. A few years later, he would get a job working as an animator in Estonia for the next 13 years, from around 1989 to 2002. Then he would continue working as an animator in Sweden for the next six years. And obviously, it would be around this point in time when he would join Renderosity to make 3D dinosaur models and digital art in his spare time. Which is what he preferred to do over making physical models, because if he messed up on the physical one, he would have to start all over. When it came to creating his digital art, he would get it done using tools from sites like Lightwave 3D, Poser, and Vue before eventually uploading them to Renderosity. 
In a short interview I managed to find in the 52nd issue of the 3D Art Direct magazine, a magazine that's specifically meant to interview digital artists and showcase their work, Dino Raoul was asked about the process of creating his dinosaurs, to which he would go a little bit more in depth with. He admits that, while necessary for his pieces, the setup process is boring. He uses his dinosaur books and the internet to find proper references of dinosaur skeletons, which is what he bases a lot of his projects on. What he really loves most about digital art is modeling, unsurprisingly. When he finishes with that, he moves on to work on the map, export them to Poser, where he finishes things off there. Along with the softwares I already mentioned, he also said that he used ZBrush sometimes and 3D Coat to aid him in his artwork. He would also use real-world animals as references for the skin texture of the dinosaurs. He would have his own side-view sketches of his dinosaurs to get a better view of the muscles. He would give them different skin colors to add for variety amongst his pieces. And overall, it said in the Renderosity post that extensive research would be done to bring his dinosaurs to life. But despite this, there were points where he would struggle to decide what dinosaur he'd want to make as there were so many options. Just can't decide. There's so much material and ideas you want to do, sometimes you even get angry and go watch TV instead. But then you look at the material again and you just start doing one thing, he said at one point. At the end of the post, it mentions that in the last six years of his life, Raul was living his dream of having his own yard and house full of animals. Good on him. A day after this article was posted, a video was uploaded on Renderosity's YouTube channel meant to honor him, and in the same day, another video was uploaded to their channel, which was another video on Dino Raoul, this time as their picked artists of the week given the unfortunate circumstances. In both of these videos, the Renderosity team honors him by showcasing his many digital art pieces from his gallery and store on the site. Which just shows that even though Dino Raoul is gone, his legacy will live on in his art, all of which are still up on his page along with his store. That could maybe explain the usage of these dinosaurs in these bad dinosaur B-movies. That or they just full-on stole them. Which, um, I, I don't- I don't think that would be surprising. Off the top of my head, the ones I know for sure that feature his models are 2013's Age of Dinosaurs and 2015's Jurassic City. It kind of sucks that this is how his art is being used. Based on what's said about him in the post that I summarized, he put a lot of work into these pieces, and sure, while they might not be award-winning pieces or anything, there's far more effort put into these models than the filmmakers put into their movies that uses them. It definitely made kids like myself just not appreciate it enough for what it was. Regardless, it's clear from some of the interviews that I found that mentioned Dino Raoul, along with just looking at the overall reception his posts would get, it's clear that his art was and still is held in high regard. I'm happy to see that Dino Raoul's art and original page is still up to this day. This way he will never be forgotten. Thank you all so much for joining me in this shorter video. Uh, I needed a little bit of a break after my last video on Theodore Rex which if you haven't seen yet I highly recommend. It's an over hour long video that takes a closer look at the story behind the movie's troubled production history. It's a pretty good video, check it out. But don't worry, I do still have bigger projects on the way. I had this topic in the back burner for a little while and finally had the time to make it now. So as always, thank you all for watching and please have a nice day.